days later, I was back at the Hall of Records. I didn't really want to be here, but I needed information about things Jesus had said. And with the man himself missing in action, there was no other place that might have the information I needed. Unfortunately, I was greeted by a familiar face. I was going to have to turn on the old Horatio Pan Scrubber song. Hiya, handsome. You missed our date the other night. Yeah, sorry about that. Something came up. Hmm, a likely story. Listen, you're a sweet lady, but I'm hot on a case. I need anything else you got about Jesus of Nazareth. You're still on that? I thought you got what you needed last time you came in. I hit a dead end. I'm still working on it. Do you have anything else on Jesus or not? Well, I do have one other file. It's an old court transcript of a trial regarding Jesus claiming to be God. The Pharisees had it sealed, but I could get my hands on it if you're willing to do something for me. You see, folks, I'm a detective. And a good one. I could already tell where this was going, and it wasn't where I wanted it to, but I really needed that file. <sighs> Alright, doll, you got me. Tomorrow night, 5 o'clock. Dinner's on me. Yay! Just let me get the file. I left the Hall of Records with the file and the receptionist's phone number, despite the fact that phones won't exist for another 2,000 years. Back in my office, I cracked open that file and got to reading. It read worse than an episode of Boston Legal. Court is again in session. Mrs. Prosecutor, please bring your case against Jesus of Nazareth. <clears throat> Prosecution calls Rabbi Nicodemus to the stand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Rabbi Nicodemus, do you know what the defendant, Jesus of Nazareth, is charged with? Yes. Blasphemy. He's claiming to be God. All right. Mr. Nicodemus, tell the jury what you heard the defendant, Jesus of Nazareth, say on the date in question. He said, before Abraham was born, I am. And what did you take that to mean? Objection. Calls for a conclusion. Prosecutor. Your Honor, the witness is a rabbi, an expert in Hebrew scripture and history. As such, he is qualified to draw some conclusions about what Jesus meant. Hmm. Objection overruled. The witness may answer. Well, everyone there knew that he was claiming to be God. And how did you arrive at that conclusion? Objection! Overruled. Well... He used the term, I am, which is the name God called himself when he talked to Moses. And uh, what made you conclude that the defendant was not merely using bad grammar? Objection! Overruled. Well, Jesus taught in the temples and synagogues all over Judea. He was, a, he was renowned for his learned teaching. He would never make a mistake like that. He would never say, I am, when he was talking about past events. Abraham lived thousands of years ago. And how do you know that Jesus was not merely claiming to be thousands of years old? Objection! Overruled. Because Jesus slipped away into the crowd as soon as he said it. And why do you think he slipped away? Objection! Overruled. 
because he knew that saying it made the Jews angry. And how do you know that he was making the Jews angry? Objection! Overrule! They were picking up stones to, th to stone him to death. And why do you think they were going to stone him to death? Objection! Overruled, Counselor. I have overruled you seven times now. Just stop. Sorry, Your Honor. Answer the question, Rabbi Nicodemus. Our law requires us to stone people to death for blasphemy. And how do you know that they were interpreting his words as blasphemy? The Jews don't stone people to death for bad grammar or for claiming to be old. So, there's no doubt in your mind that Jesus was claiming to be God. Objection! Really? Overruled. Besides claiming to be the I Am, Jesus claimed on several occasions to be the fulfillment of several prophetic terms used by God to talk about himself in the scriptures. He was claiming to be God, all right. The prosecution rests. Your witness, Counselor. Rabbi Nicodemus, did you ever see Jesus do a miracle? Objection! Irrelevant. I gave the prosecution plenty of leeway. I think it only fair to afford the defense such a courtesy. Overruled. Well, yes, of course. That, and teaching, were just about all he did for the last three years. I saw him turn water into wine. He healed a sick woman, a centurion's daughter, a blind man, and a leper. Once I even saw him raise a man from the dead. Your Honor, this defense moves for a summary judgment. Summary judgment? Motion granted. The charges of blasphemy against the defendant, Jesus of Nazareth, are hereby dropped. I object! On what grounds? The evidence in this case is compelling. This man was obviously claiming to be God. Objection overruled. The defendant committed blasphemy if he claimed to be God, unless the defendant is God. In this case, the defendant's miracles and the fulfillment of several prophecies proved he is who he claimed to be. Then my client is free to go? Not so fast. The defendant must still be turned over to the Jewish Sanhedrin. Your Honor, I object. I object too, I think. Objections overruled. This is a religious crime and therefore must be tried by our city's religious authorities. But they'll crucify him. Strangely, I agree with the defense. The Sanhedrin will not give this man a fair trial. That may be the case, but it's still the law. Besides, the Sanhedrin has no authority to put a man to death, and our esteemed governor, Pilate, will surely be fair to him. This court stands adjourned. I closed the file wishing the episode of Law and Order hadn't ended so quickly. Still, I was at a loss about what to think. I had found all the information I could about Jesus of Nazareth, and still couldn't draw a conclusion. I just couldn't make the pieces fit. Hold on a second, folks. I gotta get the door. Yeah, come in. What can I do for you? Horatio Panscrubber? The one and only. Actually, the first of six. What? I hear you've been looking into me. Whoa, listen, pal. Any investigating I do is covered under the Freedom of Information Act. That won't exist for 2,000 years. It's nothing personal. I get hired for a lot of jobs. Oh, you haven't been investigating me for a job. Not for a job? Then why... Ah, oh, wait a minute. You're the guy. You're Jesus of Nazareth. The one and only. Actually, it's of heaven now. You're supposed to be dead. Have you not been paying attention? I resurrected. Cousin Ace told you all about it. You know Ace? Of course. Yeah. 
Everybody knows Ace. So have you come to a conclusion about me? Eh, I'm not sure. Really? It seems to me you have all the information you need. Yeah, sure. I mean, you died and resurrected from the dead. And before that, you did all those miracles. You helped a lot of people. I still am helping a lot of people. Vinny and Benny told you about that. Right. The Sanhedrin really don't like you. It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. Huh? I have not come to call the righteous but sinners? You'll understand that reference in about 30 years. Okay. So what's the holdup? Why don't you think I am who I said I am? Well, you see, Jesus, I'm more of a hard evidence guy. All this stuff I found out about you, it's all anecdotal, circumstantial. There's nothing that qualifies as 100% hard evidence. The case for you being the Messiah is almost there, but I just can't find that last piece of evidence to push it across that line. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. I didn't live so that I could give you all the evidence that you would ever need to know me. If I did that, you would never have to make your own choice to believe in me, to believe that I am who I said I am, that I did all those miracles because I love all people, and that I died and resurrected to save everyone. I'll give you all the evidence I can to make an overwhelming case for myself, HP, but you have to make the choice to believe it. So I did. Jesus left that afternoon the same way he came in, through the door. Which seems strange in hindsight, considering I heard a rumor he could walk through walls. For myself, I decided to believe this Jesus character was who he said he was, the Messiah, God's Son. I wasn't entirely sure how to feel about that at first. I'm still a hard evidence guy myself. But in the case of Jesus of Nazareth, the evidence was so close to being conclusive, I decided I could take Jesus' advice and give it that last little nudge with my own choice to believe. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to practice my patented Horatio Pan Scrubber charm in the mirror before I get dressed. I've got a date tonight. Thank you.